Hey, what's up guys, it's Flex and welcome back. So last week I did something really cool to my 2016 Mercedes-Benz C300. But before I show you what I did, if you guys remembered, when I bought this car about two years ago, it came with a really small OEM screen. And the screen is just really limited in features and functionality. So what I did was I installed a module from DMP Car Design that gave the car Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And it worked really well. However, the only issue is it's still a small screen and it's not a touch screen. So what I did next was I installed a 10.25 inch Android screen from DMP Car Design. And that screen's been amazing. It's touch screen, it has access to the internet, I can download a bunch of apps, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It just has a lot of cool features and I've been really happy with that screen. However, fast forward about two years, now there's a brand new screen on the market that I need to have. And that's what I did. I installed a brand new screen. And I wanna thank DMP Car Design for sponsoring this video and providing me with the screen. And if you want more information on this screen or some of the other products that I've installed on my car, use a link in the description below. So this screen is much larger. It's still touch screen, but now it has a faster processor. It has more RAM. It has double the memory. It has Android 11, and it's just an overall better performing screen than the previous screen. Don't get me wrong, the old screen is still a great screen. It's just this one's even better. Before I show you the new screen, how it looks, how it works, and how it compares to the old screen, I wanna talk about the installation of the screen. The installation process is exactly the same as my previous screen. So what I wanna do next is show you what's included in the kit. Here is the brand new kit. It all came in this really cool DMP car design box. Here's the larger Android screen. Here's the bracket that holds the screen. It also comes with two screws. And right over here, we have the Wi-Fi receiver and it screws right onto the back of the screen. This is the GPS receiver. This also screws onto the back of the screen. And then up over here is the main wiring harness. So this white connection here plugs to the back of the screen. And right over here is a USB connector for audio that will plug into the center armrest. Up here we have two large connectors. One will connect to the connector coming off the radio. One will plug into the back of the radio. And then we have this other harness here. This connector will plug to the back of the screen. And this connector right here will plug to a connector coming out of the car. So this wiring harness also has a USB port. So that port can be used to update the software on the Android screen and also upload videos and music. And now we have the two new items. We have a speaker and we have a microphone. So the purpose of the speaker is to still give you turn by turn directions if you're using the GPS in the Android screen, but you're still in the OEM interface. And its connector here will plug to the large wiring harness to one of these connectors right here. And I'll show you that during the install process. And then we have the microphone, which is just an additional mic for better voice pickup. It has a plug right here, and it just plugs into this wiring harness and this female port right here. And I'll also show you that in the install process. And there you go, that's the kit. So what I wanna do next is show you the installation of the old screen, but when it comes to the part on the microphone and the speaker, I'll make sure to include those as well. So now, let's get to the install. Since I'll be working with electrical components, the first thing I wanna do is disconnect the battery. I'm gonna start by using a pry tool and prying up on the speaker cover that's right behind the screen. Now I'm gonna use a torque screwdriver to remove two torque screws that are holding the bracket in place for the stock screen. Now I could slide out the old screen 
and disconnect the two connections on the back of the bracket. Next, I'm going to need to remove the center console, but first I'm going to use a trim tool to remove this silver trim piece. I'm just going to pry up on the sides, and then I'm going to keep prying around while pushing down the center button. Now I can use a torque screwdriver to remove these two torque screws. And once those two screws are removed, I can go ahead and lift up on the center console and set it aside. So in using the torque screwdriver, I'm going to remove these two torque screws holding the radio in place. And once those screws are removed, I can slide the radio right out. To remove this connection, I'm going to pinch on this tab and I'm going to pull up on it. And it's almost like a latch. And once it's fully off, I can pull the connection right off. So here is the main wiring harness. What I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to remove the satellite radio connection, these two wires right here, and transfer them to the new harness and plug them in the same exact spot right there. And it's really easy to do. Just use a flathead screwdriver to push down on a clip and it'll slide right out. Now I can go ahead and install this connection right on the back of the radio. And for the other part of the main harness, I'm going to connect that to this stock connection that I originally pulled off. Again, it's just pulling a latch down, pushing them together and locking them in place. So this is the USB cable for the audio. I'm going to set that aside for now. And this right here is the connection to the screen. I'm going to need to route that through and out up top. The easy way to do it is inside the vent area. There's this plastic piece you just need to push down and it comes right off. And that will allow extra room to run wires through. To install the new speaker, I'm going to first peel back the backing paper and then I'm going to stick the speaker right inside here and I'm going to run the wires all the way down to the center area. So to wire up the speaker wire, I need to first gain access to this white and blue wire here. This is actually part of the main wiring harness as seen right here. So one wire says speaker in two, the other one says speaker out two. I'm going to disconnect both of them. And then I'm going to connect both of them together.
So for the speaker wire, I'm going to connect it to this blue wire here that says speaker out one. That's it. And then this white one doesn't get used and that's it for the wiring of the speaker. Now here's the other cable. I'm going to take the blue connection and connect it to the blue connection that I originally pulled off the original screen. And then just tuck all these wires in. Actually, I'm going to use some duct tape just to kind of tidy things up just so they're not rattling inside. To install the microphone, I'm going to start by peeling back the adhesive backing sheet. And then I'm going to mount the microphone right in this plastic area right here. So I'm going to be routing the wire all along here, up here, and then plugging it to the female port here that's part of this wiring harness. So I'm just going to reach in and then plug it to the port. And now I'm going to move it off to the side just so it's out of the way of the vents. And now I'm just going to use a trim tool to tuck in the wires all the way to the center of the console. And that's it for the installation of the microphone. Now I'm going to take the Wi-Fi receiver and I'm going to sneak the connection end through the radio area and right out top. And now with the GPS receiver, I'm going to do the same exact thing. So here is the bracket. It has two large square openings where I'm going to route the wires through. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. So there should be two white connections and two metal connections for the two receivers. Okay, so here's a screen. I'm going to go ahead and connect all the connectors to the screen. Once they're fully attached, I can go ahead and push the bracket onto the back of the screen. And then I'm gonna lift up on these two flaps where there's openings for screws. And there's two included screws in the kit that I'm just gonna put in those holes and screw down to the bracket. And once that's done, I'm going to click the inside plastic piece of the vent back into place. And now I'm going to temporarily mount the screen by just pushing in the wires and pushing the bracket in place. So before I reinstall the radio, these two receivers I'm going to set aside. I'm probably going to run them to the right pass near your footwell. And these three USB cables, including this one for the audio, I'm going to run them all to the center armrests. And I'm going to do that by removing these two Torx screws using a Torx screwdriver. So I'm just going to remove them. And then once the screws are removed, I can lift up on the armrests and slide the three connections right into the armrests.
And once they're fully in, I'll secure the two screws. And I'll take the audio USB cable and plug it into the USB port inside the armrest. Now I'm gonna go ahead, reconnect the battery and test everything out just to make sure it's working fine. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Next, I'm gonna test my scroll wheel. So that seems like it's working fine, but if it didn't work fine, what I need to do is actually right here in these two connections. All I need to do is remove these and reattach them on the opposite connection, and that should fix the scroll wheel. So with everything working fine, I can go ahead and slide the radio back into place. Reinstall the two screws holding it in place. And now reinstalling the center console. So as you can see, the center console is fully assembled, the screen's not bolted down yet, and the receivers are here. I'm gonna take the Wi-Fi receiver and just install it on the bottom panel here. And then for the GPS receiver, I'm gonna route it through the panel, which is held down by two screws from here to here. And I'm gonna run it up all the way up here. And then I'm gonna install it right next to the rain sensor. Next step is I took the two screws from the original bracket and I'm using it in the new bracket. Push the screen into place. Use a torque screw to tighten those two screws. Replace the speaker cover and that's it for the install. Okay, now that you guys know how I installed the screen, let me show you the screen, how it compares to the old screen, and just the features and functionalities. There's a lot to the screen. So here's the new screen installed. Before we get into the screen, I just wanna let you guys know, I'm not gonna go over every single feature that's in this screen. I've already actually done that in a previous video because a lot of the features on the old screen is all in this screen as well. So definitely go check out that video. But now, let's get into the difference between this screen and the previous 10.25 inch screen. So the first thing is size. As you can see, this is really large. So this right here is the old screen. And if I measure it, this measures about 11 inches across. The new one measures almost 13 inches. So it's definitely larger for sure. You can see right there for a comparison. So next thing, let's turn on the car. So here is the NTG or OEM interface. As you can see, the layout is a little different. Now the original screen or interface, it's actually well proportioned. It's not stretched, it's not distorted. It actually looks really good. And then over here on the right side, in the previous screen, there was an image of a car. So if you open the car door, you can see the door open. 
Now it's a speed gauge. So in the middle we have the digital speed. I have it in miles per hour, but you can also do kilometers per hour. It has the temperature. I have it in Fahrenheit, but you can change it to Celsius. It also has some indicators for the lights, the seatbelt, and the parking. The only thing that changes is the digital speed. There's nothing that goes on with the actual gauge, but it just looks pretty cool. So that's the brand new NTG OEM interface. So once I tap the screen and go into the Android interface, and here is the Android interface. It looks very similar to the one on my previous screen, but now it's so much faster and it's so much more responsive. I really like it. And again, I'll put the specs of this screen up so you guys can see what it has. And the screen is also running Android 11, whereas the previous screen was running Android 10. Android 11 probably fixed a lot of the bugs in the old screen. That's why the interface is so responsive and it's not laggy. Everything works just really well. The next improvement to the screen is something called theme settings. So if you look, the background is blue. If I hit theme settings, now I have eight options of different themes. So for example, let's say if I change my ambient light kit to like a purplish pink. Now I can go ahead and select the purplish pink theme and I have a screen that matches my ambient kit, which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna leave it on purple, I prefer blue, but again, hitting theme settings, I have eight different options to choose from. So there's kind of like this yellow gold, there's another kind of bluish green, there's red, there's gray, more of a neutral tone, and there's also this last one, which kind of gives it kind of this graphic in the background. It looks kind of like a, a layout of a map which is kind of cool, but I prefer blue. The next cool thing that's really new to the screen is now you can access Apple CarPlay and Android Auto right from the home menu using this icon right here that says phone link. This is gonna allow it to instantly connect wirelessly to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on your mobile phone. And also new to the screen is it has the capability to run Apple CarPlay or Android Auto using a USB cable. All you need to do is plug your phone into the USB port and it'll run Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That's really cool if you have multiple drivers or if you have a friend who wanna borrow the car, they can plug in right into the USB port without having to go through the setup of CarPlay wirelessly with the screen. So I just started the car. The last thing I wanna show you is the reverse camera interface. So as you can see, it looks a lot different. Again, you have the screen right here. It's not distorted. It looks well proportioned. And then you also have your speed gauge as well, which looks really nice. Can't say this enough. When everything is fully set up, it just works really well. CarPlay works really well. Bluetooth works really well. Navigation works well. The internet is completely smooth. Just everything works so well on the screen. And for the added size, I don't think it's too large. It actually suits the car really well. So there you have it, an amazing screen from DMP Car Design. Definitely go check it out, link in the description below. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, hit like below. As always, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next time.